Roger, I'm also going to have uh, Marty McFly in the call with us too. He's going to ask some questions, but um, no, no, no trickery here. Nothing. We're not trying to um, make you say something that uh, to make you look bad or anything like that. So no, like I, I know you might not be super trusting of us, but um, the goal of this phone call is to just kind of explain who we are, what we do, get your side, you can get our side, we can talk it out instead of going back and forth on YouTube comments. Yeah, and just for my protection, I am recording you on okay. my audio program. Okay, we're recording too, just just so you're aware. So we, um, I wanted to add, uh, I know in one of your videos you said that uh, we edit the phone calls that uh, Mark puts up on the George Yard has a negative bank account channel. Those calls are not edited. Um, we don't really, we're not in the habit of editing calls because they, one, it takes too much work to do. And um, we prefer to have everything unadulterated just for the sake of accuracy. Like we're, we're about promoting the truth and not twisting things up. So editing calls wouldn't be anything that would benefit us. So uh, as long as you got a recording um, and we got a recording, you can play it back whenever and it'll sound the same as ours. So um, okay. do you so do you have any it seems like you might have some questions for us about all of this. Um, and then I can ask have Marty if I'm sure Marty has some questions for you, too, and I've got some. But um, since you're the guest, we'll. We'll let you start. Um, anything in particular you were wondering about us or had questions about or um, anything like that? Well, I just, in general, don't understand the situation. And um, I would like to find out if you have actual proof of George doing any of the things that you all imply that he did or is this just a joke to bother him no um we have we have um so a little bit of background on well, let's start from the beginning so um george had in uh in a, a relation a quote relationship if you want to call that with a woman named jamie whalen i don't know how much he's filled you in into the situation but um back when jamie was alive there were several people that jamie knew uh, at her work and a couple people that knew her through George or, uh, and those people told us that Jamie claimed that George had raped her. Um, we don't believe that it was forcefully. We believe that she was inebriated and he took advantage of her, but it was, it would still be considered rape, um, since she wasn't able to consent. And we have that, we have accounts of that through Jamie, through her coworkers, uh, through people that she talked to she was never able to file any charges against him, but even George acknowledged that she made the claims against him. He says they're false. Yeah. Yeah. That Jamie filed a TRO against yes. George. Yes, she did. And going to go to court, but she backed out because George threatened her. Yes. Oh, boy. Yes. Okay. So that, uh, this is, the thing about Jamie is backed up by, we're not just making it up, um, because if we were making it up, that would be considered slander and defamation, and we're not about that. We're about promoting the true narrative about what's going on, and um, we don't we don't want to have that uh, doubt casted. The only person that hasn't been able to disprove that is George. Um, we, we've provided the evidence, and George has been able to unable to refute those that evidence. So. George also doesn't know anything about jamie he yeah. had no relationship with her he didn't know she was jewish he didn't uh, know her family was jewish okay. he had no idea that jamie had 25 prostitution charges he knew nothing about her hmm. nothing whatsoever but george well, romanticizes situations to fit with his delusions mm -hmm. and yeah. He but, now tries to convince himself that him and Jamie were some Romeo and Juliet story, and it simply is not true. Jamie was a human being who had a drug problem who was using George. She used George for money. She did not sleep with him. She used to pretend she had sexually transmitted diseases and would tell him she had things so that he, she couldn't sleep with him. And he pursued and pursued and pursued her. 
including getting her drunk, knowingly giving her money, pretending he didn't know it was being spent on drugs, when it was more than obvious that Jamie was on drugs and was strung out half the time. Right. Well, Georgia said he knew she was a prostitute or that had prostitution issues. Mm -hmm. But again, I met George. I, I'm not here again to slander him. No. I barely know him, but I just met him briefly at this club I was at working at the time and I still work at. And only I only know what he says, and I've been. I just didn't want to judge him for not knowing any, you know, by not thing, knowing. Roger, this, this is what George does. He relies mm -hmm. on the fact that no one will go out and talk to us. He relies on that fact, so he tells right. his side of it, and he will make you believe this is all because he does a show. This is all because people are jealous of him. This is all because of this. These people are mental shut-ins who don't do anything. They're all retards, this, that, the other. And he'll spout off loads of nonsense. The right. truth is, George doesn't like us because we know George and we tell the truth about him. And he uh, can't handle that fact. He no. can't handle it. No, this, is, this has never yeah, been a... I've, I've been in bad relationships. So has everybody. And... I just see him as someone who's not good with women and doesn't know how to find someone and he was taken advantage of by Sadly, this person. There's, there's a pattern of behavior with George and women, Roger, that is a concerning pattern of behavior. Right. Yes. I've seen it. I, from what I've seen, there's someone, I won't mention her name, at the nightclub that came in last uh, Thursday night and accused him of being a stalker and told people to stay away from him. But so she that was drunk. is the tip of the iceberg. She was drunk at the time, and she is also herself racist. In fact, I'm Jewish, and she made a Jewish joke in front of everyone. So I don't believe her totally, but I do see the pattern of George not being good with women, not being a socially adept person and bothering people. I just don't see him as someone like, that raped someone. When was when was this at? The the thing where the woman accused him you said this was last week where George was drunk at the club? No, she was drunk. Oh, okay. Karaoke and she came out of nowhere drunk with her son and said to, to the bartender, stay away from George. He's a known stalker and has restraining orders against him. But this is someone I don't value or trust myself. Okay. He is not the first person to say that. No, he is Every not. Every woman who has ever come forward about George says the same thing. Mm. Do you? He's around outside their houses. He mm. harasses them on the phone. He stalks their Facebook profiles. He does things that fit with someone who would commit a sexual offence against a woman. He fits the profile, he meets the criteria, and there are accusations that he has done such things. The only well, thing George relies upon... forward and, and get him arrested? Well, this is what George relies upon. The one person that was going to do it, OD'd. He uh, relies on the fact that he hasn't been sent to jail... So therefore, it can't be proven. Ah, uh, yeah. One person that had the balls to do it ended up dying of a speedball on a floor because of him. Yeah. Have you? Did you get a chance to listen to the the voicemail that Jamie left for one of George's old um, flames about him stealing her pants? Yes. Yeah. I did. But I just know from personal experience that you can be in bad relationships. And someone the opposite did happen to me. So, yeah, uh, but you've got to admit, it's not a normal thing. No, for someone to cut not someone's shoes up and steal their pants. pants. No, but and that is done as part of controlling and coercive behaviour to maintain right. control over the individual to stop her leaving. She right, was trying course. to leave. She didn't right. want to be near him. Right. 
I so do. how can it then be this Romeo and Juliet love story? Probably can't. But so I... do you see how if you actually take a step back and look at the facts and you look at there's no smoke without fire, when you right. actually take it in a totality of circumstances situation, there is no doubt in my mind that he abused Jamie and he raped her. There is no doubt in my mind. It was not a violent rape where he pinned her down and did things. He knew she was strung out and he knew she shouldn't, he, she couldn't consent. But to him, she was in his house, so therefore that's all he needed. Wow. Yeah, she, he, he frequently um, parrots that she shared his bed with him and um, all, all this crap. And we have... Um, I don't I don't know if you listened to our entire podcast that I did with um, Marty and Captain Corpulence, but we went over the comments that um, Angela left. I don't know if George has talked to you about Angela. We can go into her background if you're not familiar with her, but um, uh, comments that Angela left that George would try to get Jamie drunk so he, because he said that she was more sexually friendly with him when she was drunk and um, that... Uh, when and Jamie also left a, um, a a message to somebody or to Angela, sorry, on Facebook, talking about how she would be drunk around George and he would get her drunk and she couldn't stand being around him anymore, even when she was drunk and she would rather go live in a boiler room somewhere in a building that uh, she was breaking into instead of being with him. So it, it's not this isn't just a, this isn't one thing about Jamie. It, it's, it's a, like Marty said, it's multiple women who are having, reporting this problem with him. And, uh, it, it's just a, it's just a standard pattern of behavior that George has, de like you said, George is bad with women. I, I firmly believe that he has mom, mommy issues. If you want to, you know, use a slang like that, um, because of a poor relationship he had with his mother, abandoning him when he's leaving and he just can't let go of women once he thinks he's in a relationship with them or misreads cues all the time that, oh, because a woman does something nice for me or um, because a woman uh, says something to me, she wants me, we're going to be in a relationship, I can get her, I'm the macho man, stuff like that. Right. Sorry, Roger. I, he I've, witnessed in the seat. That. I've witnessed that, again, not to besmirch his character, uh, but... I, I've seen that. I've heard him say things about women like this one. She works at the hotel, and George is his age. He's not in good physical shape, and for some reason he pursues women that are 30 years or more younger than him. And I told him as a friend, I said, um, they're not going to be interested in you. People in a public, you know, in a service industry job, it's their job to be People nice like to, to, you. to get tips. <laughs> yeah. And that's something you learn growing up. And but I know other Roger, people like that, but that, that's disturbing. Yes. Listen, George, George has this thing. He asks, he believes in the secret. So he thinks that if him and one other person him and a woman should be together that's it it's going to happen and he really believes that this is wow. also a man that has spent his inheritance on psychics oh boy so he well, believes why? in all why of these he, is, he goes to psychics that? about women like oh yeah it doesn't sound like even he would do that no but... he he openly talks about going to psychics oh. you can ask him he goes to psychics and he we have spent his last hundred dollars on going to a psychic we have screenshots of him posting to a woman that he on facebook that he would go get readings from asking how much for a 30 minute reading how much for a 40 minute reading um stuff like that and he yeah like marty said he's talked about this openly in his previous shows back when he was in the studio about how he believes in psychics and stuff like that wow is this one of the shows where there was someone named sarah uh so Sarah's often on some of those shows, but he'll tell you. You could phone him up and yeah, ask him, and he'll tell you he goes to a psychic. Someone named Sarah something who claimed to be a psychic, and oh, Sarah West. Loves Sarah West, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah West is out there. She's out yeah. there, man. She's she's a whole other level, but she is out there. She's kind of on the same wavelength as G as George. Wow. 
But this is the thing. He he lies to all these people around him. He tries to tell them this is all because we're jealous. Believe us, I, I would none of us jealous. are jealous of him. No. I I really, yeah. You know, I met George and at this place, Rick's, because I was working there. And, uh, you know, I'm just trying to repair my reputation of whatever it is. And he knew no, the... Brother, we, we don't think you're a bad guy. Right. We don't I think you're don't. a bad guy. We don't think you're a, a scumbag. You've no. been misled by George, right. who convinces I, people around him. If this is being recorded, I'm just saying, you know, I'd met him that way through the owner of Rick's. And those people claim that George is making up the whole trolling thing and he has multiple personalities. Well, he does and, make a lot of things up right, because he, but, he uses the fact that he's trolled as an excuse for his behavior. Right. So right he, he, he can't accept. Listen, Roger, you're a decent guy. If you do right. something shitty to someone, you'll probably turn around and say, I was a bit of a shitty human being. Right. George can't do that. There is always someone to blame for the situation he's yeah. in. Whether it's the fact that a Mexican guy crashed into his car, whether it's the fact that a bank lied to him about a mortgage, whether it's the fact that he did this, he the trolls did this, there's an excuse for everything in his life. He can't take personal responsibility. Right, but what I was I guess getting at is that you know, he is not a he has some ability, I'll give him that, that he has a good radio voice. Dale Carnegie is a real course, and he has a good voice for radio, and he's been on regular radio, not doing his his dirty Howard Stern show. But he's not a good interviewer. That's why I was already thinking I didn't want to be on the show. Also, it's at 11 or 12 midnight, even though you could film a show anytime and post it anytime. But that was my feeling. You know, he's not a good interviewer. He's not funny, mostly. And, uh, but... Yeah, I guess he just got me because I wanted to be on a TV show, a YouTube series, and I'm on one that I have with another friend. And you get addicted to the attention, wanting to be on film and pursue acting. You're not the first person. You're not the first right. person nope. to do that with right. George. Nope. There's a lot of people that have done that. But the difference right. is, George... He wants you to be there because there is a reason everyone leaves him, Roger. Have you not found yourself questioning how does this guy have no one in his life? I have, but I don't have to question it because I have evidence of that. Everyone I know that knows him avoids him and says he's kind of out there. And I've already decided, obviously... Him hearing that I did this, he'll be angry and won't want me on his show. But that was kind of my intention anyway, because <laughs> so it's a bad Instead show. of you quitting, you get him to fire you. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad <laughs> show. It is not funny. Kevin is not funny at all. And we Kevin did can have bit. moments. We'll right. give we'll give Kevin we'll give Kevin credit where credit is due. Kevin can have moments. Yeah. But Kevin oh. has been much better on his show with Keith, where right. he's talking about intellectual things and yeah. talking about stuff he's interested in rather right. than making poop jokes. Right. Yeah, I mean, I tried to be interviewed in character or as myself, and he keeps interrupting me to make poop jokes or put down the character he's supposed to be interviewing. So you can't be better than him, Roger. Right. And he talks louder. He gets a better seat in the video screen. Uh, because this is all about feeding his about ego. about him. It is. And uh, even the last one we did, I thought it was funny that he couldn't stay off the camera. 
you saw that one, I don't care if you did or not, I was in a character pretending to have bad dreams where I was talking to ghosts. And he was supposed to not be on camera, but he kept getting caught in the camera behind in the background. So that's beside the point. But he's just not good at this media thing. He's not good at the internet. All of this he could avoid. I've told him this. All he would have to do is start another YouTube channel, uh, not attack you guys for attacking him, in my view, and not post it to that channel and block his phone and change his email. But he says, no, I can't give in to them. He won't. It's not that he can't give in to us. He likes the attention. Right. And then he this on. makes him feel famous. Anyone else wants to talk about the trolls? He says, don't talk about them. Don't get involved with them. And he says he doesn't talk. And then I get all this evidence of him talking to you all or whoever it is. And uh, I would like to know, even though it doesn't matter now, why someone put a picture of me on my bulletin board in this apartment building. Okay. Or, I, I can answer. You want to take that, Marty, or can I? No, no, you you can go ahead. Okay, this is how it. This is how this stuff usually works, uh, Roger. So George will get someone on the show, and like you're explaining now, he'll lie to them about the trolls, say that they're a bunch of you know basement dwellers, don't talk to them, and sort of bait his people into engaging with the trolls, which grants our attention, and then we try to put pressure on those people to get them to the table, to talk to us, to find out what George is really like. And um, so they can uh, they can make their own more informed decision if they want to continue talking to him or not. Because people, people deserve to know who they're talking to, who they're associating with. Because if you're associating with someone who's a known homophobe and racist, which I'll, I'll get into that. I want to talk to you about that later on. But if we get, if we, if you're talking with someone who doesn't have the best reputation, you know, that's that's an association that you have with someone that's bad, and that also makes you look bad. So the the thing with the flyer wasn't malicious. It was just part of a plan that we usually do that gets people's attention pretty fast, and they either respond to it negatively, like Kristen Ariel Connor did, or they react, react positive and want to learn more and come to the table like you did. You picked the right choice. Now, I can assure you from here on out that there will be no more flyers posted about you. No one will contact your employer, and I'm sorry that that happened. Um, and uh, there won't be any repercussions on our end now that you've decided to talk to us and be civil, and that's all we wanted. Um, I, I know that Mark, under the account, George Yard at a negative bank account, was in contact with you about trying to get you on for a show on an interview, and that that's really all we wanted. And we don't have control over what some of the other trolls do um, mostly just the ones that are in the inner circle, but there are a, a lot of people that follow George. I don't know if you've looked it at the just five of us. No, it's not. There's hundreds of those those calls that Mark uploads and the podcast and stuff easily get over a thousand views. And those are people, individual users. So over one thousand people follow and listen to this. And we can't control right. the comments and everything, but we we assure you from moving forward that that won't happen anymore. Yeah, 300 people watched the video, mm -hmm. the last one I did. Yes. You know, that's interesting to me, but the wrong type of attention. Yes. Though George was saying, oh, there's about a dozen people. No, there are not. But not. I was wondering, and you could say whatever, but when someone looks at a YouTube video more than once, is that counting that, or is it? Just oh, that's how many people are watching. That's how many people are watching. I mean, you've only got to look at our Discord. The yeah. Discord right. has about a hundred uh, people in it. Hundred and fifty people in it, just yeah. in our right. Discord. The Facebook groups have six, seven hundred members. Yeah, right. George oh. only George tells himself that this is twelve or a dozen or so people to make himself feel better. That there's just a very small p amount of people that don't like him and troll him when he can't accept the reality that there are thousands of people out there 
throughout the ages that have seen him think he's a hilarious individual be for all for the wrong reasons and like to follow his train wreck of a life he that makes him feel better he he feels but i'm sure you've been talked to about michael saunders he thinks michael saunders is like half of the people that troll him when they're not um the, there was an account you were called debo neighbor that you were talking to on one of your videos yeah. he thinks that saunders it's not it's an individual yeah. a pi named henry mitchell um, he thinks Jay Saunders for a time. Yeah, he he thinks Jay Smith was Saunders for a time. He thinks he thinks all kinds of people are uh, are Saunders. You've got and... to remember, Roger, George only knows what we allow him to know. Mm -hmm. He can think he knows anything. He doesn't know anything. We wow. control the information that he knows because we give him things to send him on a wild goose chase. He thinks wow. he can do it to us. It doesn't work. We can do it to him seven days a week, and it works every time. Look how look how well that little uh, ruse, as we quote George to call uh, his little things about that daughter thing did. So I wanted to ask you about that. So George contacted you and said for you to make a video saying that he had a long lost daughter and to put it on there for what was his rationale for wanting to do that? Just to get us off the trail of Jamie that we were talking about recently. Yes, that okay. is exactly what he said. Okay. He Do you have to know him? But he he also said he didn't. He was concerned with whoever's peeing and spitballing on his father's grave, and uh, putting a tracker on his car. Mm -hmm. And which, but which this, by, by the way, tracking his vehicle, Roger, is a protected litigation and investigation activity. Yes, so it's completely legal. When people uh, are considering a wrongful death lawsuit, they are entitled to investigate the defendant, and they are entitled to gather as much information as they would like to obtain about the defendant. So, so they protecting can litigation activity on someone's car. That's, yes. that's legal. It's a protected litigation activity. There is nothing George can do about it, because if there was, do you not think the police would have done something? I do not. No. Okay. Well, this is all new to me. That happened. So I bet George has told you that there is no wrongful death lawsuit because it doesn't exist because he hasn't been served with it. Right. He doesn't hasn't gotten into that much detail. But okay. So there wasn't. The, no, I don't know anything about a lawsuit. So there, there is a wrongful death lawsuit that okay. has been drafted, and is waiting to be filed. The difference is. Some of us are clever at the time we file things to ensure that they have maximum effect. Right. So he isn't being served yet, because why would you serve someone when there is no financial gain from serving them on a wrongful death lawsuit? The time to wait is to wait until he has assets in place that can be seized. Well, he's not going to have any assets because he's completely broke. No, he will at some point. There'll be pensions, there'll be things like that that can be taken, and they, they will be seized under a wrongful death lawsuit, which will well, succeed. I understand the, the motive, but I'm just being honest. George is living in his car right now. In fact, he's living in a rental car because I helped him to get the money to get a rental car because his car is the transmission blew up or something. It's not drivable. So, Roger, why are you lending him money when you know he can't pay it back? I am an overly nice person, and he did get a notarized note saying he would um, pay me back. We notarized it with a notary at Office Max. You, but so you, know, how, you know how many people he owes money to, right? I don't. See, he, I didn't know he, any of he that. owes money to people all over. There are people he okay. doesn't talk to because he can't pay them fifty dollars back. Wow. Well, the other option was him kind of talking me into staying at my apartment because I felt bad he was in the cold during the winter. So he was at my house. I had some apartment. I had another person visiting. And he showed up, uh, called and said he was outside and didn't have any money and his car wasn't drivable and needed help.
So luckily I had You're a good experiment. you're a good person for helping him, Roger. But you know <laughs> this isn't the end. No, you know but I, come to I you told again for more money. I'm not offering him any more money and I did tell him I he cannot stay here period. Uh I did let him come in to shoot some videos and to use the shower, but I probably will not be doing that since he'll be very angry and won't want to talk to me and I'm going to block him from my phone and all social media anyway, but. You know, I feel bad, Roger, because you're never going to get that money back. I don't. Yeah, I don't need it. Wasn't that much, really, but. You haven't you haven't signed you haven't signed as like a guarantor on this rental. Oh no. No, okay. I just paid for the deposit and the um lent him a small amount so he could afford to pay for one week of renting the car and now he's paying for it. This is the thing. He's stuck in a poverty trap. He will never sort himself out because he won't go and get a normal job, Roger. He won't go right. to Walmart and get a normal job. Right. I understand that. I wrote it off as me being too nice to someone who can't pay me back a small amount of money. But I don't want to air that. I just feel bad for him. I know I didn't know there was real evidence or more ac ac accusers. And I didn't know that. But you, you know, you know, he had a convicted child sex offender live in his house that he knew about yeah i did not okay so that. magic matt who used to host the show with george uh -huh. was arrested for forcibly raping a 13 year old girl i did not know that <laughs> not just once twice mm. george decided because he didn't want to pay the mortgage himself he would move this person in to a neighborhood with kids in it. Oh. And then George had no hot water, no heat, and often had no electric. So the mm. guy's dad refused to pay the rent. George okay. then took this guy's dad to court and tried to get this guy to lie about his own father. Oh, boy. George was then also angry because the cop that used to live opposite the house that the bank took from him told George, you shouldn't have that guy living here because he's a sex offender. George uh -huh. told that person to go fuck themselves. Uh, okay. Because all he cares about is money. That is it. And himself. Yes. At money just slightly underneath himself. They're uh, almost even. Right. They're almost even in his head. But he has... He has no moral compass, Roger. There is no moral compass in that man. Hmm. Wow. You know, there's this is why George lies to people because he wants yeah. he doesn't ever want people to talk to us because when we come out with facts and evidence, he doesn't know what to do. So he will just get angry, shout at you, tell you he hates you, tell you you're a cunt, tell you you're this, tell you you're that, and never speak to you again. And in his head, he writes you out of the chapter of that bit of his life. Ah. He is a he is a user. He has never been anything but a user. He and we it, it is thrown around often that he is a narcissist and I have no doubt in my mind that George is a malignant narcissist who's also a pathological liar who uses people and then as soon as he can't get anything out of them anymore or they do something that he thinks slights him, he throws them away without any second thought it, it's it's he doesn't form any attachments based off of interests or you know common co common friends or anything like that it's all so he can get something out of somebody and, and it's sad and you fought you fell into the trap and this is like going back to what i said this was our end goal was to inform you about this so you don't keep going on this path because it's just going to end up being more money that you spend on him and it's just going to be more abuse and we we noticed on the show that you seemed like you didn't want to be there sometimes. And 
uh, we noticed, and George does the same thing with you that he did with Kevin, where he doesn't let you, he doesn't let the co-host talk. He interrupts him all the time to make stupid jokes that are. Do you want to talk about outdated jokes when he talk, was talking about Keith? George just makes poop jokes all the time, like you said, and that's stuff that you make in third grade. Right. Yeah. I see that. I yeah, but um, it's just hard to yeah, it's hard to stomach that someone is like this, but. Uh, um so what is the deal with this michael saunders other than that george used him as a paralegal according to him and he just me to take that will uh yeah uh michael saunders was a person that george hired to format his documents for him and it turns out that michael was actually writing the um court documents for george which was extremely illegal both on mike's part and george's part since George filed in form of papyrus, meaning that he will not be taking any legal help for his court case. After a while, Mike started taunting the goons, and uh, Marty applied some pressure onto Mike. Mike ended up turning on George. He did an interview with Marty. Um, after the interview was done, George went back to Saunders and was talking to him for a while. Uh, Saunders recorded all the conversations and gave them to us, and then George repeated that process two more times. Uh, this most recent time, he was talking to jo or to Saunders for about a year. Saunders recorded all of those calls. George knew they were being recorded, more or less. He says it multiple times on almost every single call. He mentions that you're probably recording this, but yet George kept talking to him and telling him details about his life. Um, and those are the calls now that are being uploaded to the George Yard has a negative bank account channel. They're completely unedited. Uh, nothing's taken out. And that's who Saunders is. Saunders doesn't, Saunders doesn't, it's important to note that Saunders fucks with George very little. Uh, Saunders doesn't have a car, so he's completely reliant on someone else to drive him around. And his husband, Danny, is a postman who doesn't have the time to ferry Saunders around to go fuck with George. He took him to the library once to view George's live show, and that was about it. That's all I know of. And other than that, Saunders has no way of getting anywhere. So George thinking that Saunders is going to his grave, his father's grave, is completely false. It's Henry Mitchell that's doing that, and that's proof by uploading Henry uploading his videos to the Debo Neighbor channel. Um, and it's just it's Saunders. George goes. George always thinks that someone that he's close to is fucking with him because it's easier for him to cope with than thinking that there's an un, un, uh, unmasked identity, a phantom, basically. That's messing with him, and he can't do anything about it. That answer your question. So, for the record, yeah, we are not friends with Saunders. No, we're not. He is a racist right. piece of shit. The same yes. as George. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Jo yeah, Saunders, seen, yeah. If George ever tells you we're big friends with him, or we're not. I've seen. Um. Yeah, I don't know anything about him, but I know George thinks everyone is Saunders. In fact, he called him last night and started yelling at him from my apartment, which was disturbing. Cause, uh, so that was the turning point for me, really. Yeah, but, but this is the thing. It's not Saunders. He right? is a racist piece of shit. And what's hilarious is he is a racist piece of shit married to a Mexican. Ah. Uh, who is yeah. gay. He is right. a gay racist man married to a Mexican who feeds off the bottom of the barrel poorest of the poor in the world to mm -hmm. take their money for legal cases that have no standing. He knew George had no legal case. He knew it, but he just wanted to charge George for time. So he took it and did it. Mm -hmm. That's, That's not... the bottom of the barrel that you're dealing with. This, well, this, I'm oh, not... sorry, go ahead. I'm not dealing with it, but you meant figuratively, yes. George. Yeah. Um, oh, well, that's too bad. So why is Henry Mitchell, if he's a private investigator, on a real case to prove that George raped Jamie or wrongful death, whatever, going to pee on George's father's grave or put spitballs on it? Yeah. Pressure does a lot of things to people. Pressure puts people in the right frame of mind. Pressure <clears throat> applied in the correct way, with the correct amount of force, and for the right amount of time, will always produce the end result. 
part of proving that George is the person he is, is making him react to events to demonstrate that he only has one emotion, anger. Mm. But, okay, I don't know. I would just see it as playing George's game. He's getting attention. He's getting negative and promotion. And he's allowed to get mad, which he seems to like to do. But why, you know, that just seems childish in itself. I've also got to remember, George has, George has spent a year telling this guy that he's going to beat him up. Right. But George is not physically threatening as much exactly. as Exactly. But why, do, so why but, say he's going to beat everyone up? He knows he can't do it. No, he's he's big, but he's fat, out of shape. He has arthritis, and uh, anyway, I just didn't understand that, and I still don't know why Henry Mitchell apparently came to Rick's Rock Cafe where I was working and found out. That's how he found out who I was. But no, you yeah. you you were found before that, Roger. Oh. Well, that was what someone said that it was Henry Mitchell went to Rick's Rock Cafe, and we've had we've hung. had people at, we've had people at Rick's since the birthday bash happened there. Oh, not just well, one person. George George doesn't believe it, but there's a lot of money involved in all of this, and there's investors that pay for some of these things to happen because people want to I don't know right the wrongs of the internet. Right. Well, George actually says he thinks there are investors and people paying for things, but it just, I mean, could, now that you've talked to me and seen it's a bad situation, I didn't mean to get into, can you take the Ricks out of this? Yeah, we, I, I give you, there's nothing to do with it. Yeah, well, that we won't we won't bother you anymore. And as a token of good faith, if you want, um, I can get Mark, who owns the George Yared account. Um, he can take down the videos that you uploaded, if you like. I I don't know if that's something, or if you don't care, we can leave them up. But I would like them down. Okay, we can do that. We can take them down. We'll take them down today. Um, but you know, there was not, a bad... we're not unreasonable people. Right? No. right. I'm glad that there was a bad review. Maybe this is unconnected because my boss is also not good at the internet or his part, <laughs> but they claim there was a bad review of Rick's after George's birthday party with photos taken from the party saying that it was COVID spreading and terrible singing and they had to go get rid of whilst we can whilst we control a lot of things. We can't right. control every single person that hates George. Oh, right. So right. there's a lot of people that do things that are not sanctioned by us. Okay. Well, I'm just you wasn't know. sure if that was part of no, it. No, we, we would tell you, but there's things that are not sanctioned by us that we have no control over. We try and maintain control, but right. unfortunately, it's not a dictatorship. Right, right. Well, you know, and it would surprise you to know as well. I once had a two hour conversation with George trying to convince him that the best thing he could do was stop and move on. Right. He was uh -huh. unable to do it. Stop what and move on? What do you mean? Stop taking our friends to court to try and get money to pay your bills. Mm. And he wasn't interested, Roger. He could not do it. As much as as much as George might want you to believe that he hates all of this, he loves the drama. He loves it. It makes him feel validated as an entertainer and a human being, as some sort of wrestling star. That, that and you you said it yourself. He he should just stop doing this, but he can't. And you told me that he talks about us all the time. And we we know all this. We know if he. If he didn't care about us or what we thought, he wouldn't be sitting in your apartment making 45-minute-long tirade videos to directed towards us. He, someone who doesn't care about detractors or what other people think about him don't spend that much time on them. Right. He does care. He spends all his time actually losing money he should be making doing DoorDash, calling me, commenting on things he said he wouldn't comment on, and getting involved and being angry about stuff 
it just didn't make sense to me at all. It doesn't. Um, no, because again, it's all part of George's subterfuge. And again, uh, he needs all of this as an excuse for his shitty behavior. Right, right. Because now he's got an excuse for why he doesn't have a house. Now he's got an excuse for why the bank took it. Now he's got an excuse for why he's had cars repossessed. Now he's got an excuse why he had his bank accounts closed. It, it, he just needs excuses for his poor behavior. Wow. Okay. And I'm sure at some point you will be to blame for some of his behavior. At some point in the next six months, you will be to blame for his behavior. Well, I'm not going to associate with him at all, but I'm. You know, and it's a, Roger, you know, you, you know, people might say things and might have said things in jest recently about you, but you don't come across as a piece of shit. You don't come across as a person who would openly accept people being racist. And you don't come across as a person that would openly accept people being homophobic. No, but on that note, I don't think that's really matters because I wrote what I wrote because no, I think if it doesn't really matter, but I think that's George is immature way of insulting people. When they offend Roger, him. If, if he if he wasn't the age he was and it wasn't the year it was, I'd let you off and I'd give you that as an excuse. Simply not. He called a clerk and we've got him admitting it. He called him a nigger because he asked him to pay his motel bill. He okay. got he got mad at the Mexican who hit him and openly called the Mexican a spick in front of Michael Saunders' husband, who Marty mentioned is Mexican, and just did it shamelessly. He will insult people's homosexuality. He will make derogatory comments saying, well, why don't you just go fuck them in the ass, or why don't you go suck a big cock, or whatever, you're a faggot. And he'll throw, he'll throw that around nonstop. And it's not an immature sort of insult as you said in your video or george is in a sign of the times uh he legitimately does not like gays he can say a gay couple out the back of his taxi yeah he threw being gay. yeah he threw a he and he this isn't this is admitted this is on a call and i'll well mark will find it one day and upload it but um he admitted that he was giving a gay couple an uber ride and they started kissing in his back seat and he told them to stop because he thought it was disgusting, and they, and he said it's very vile that you guys are doing that. And they said, well, it's just us. It's not vile. And he said it is vile. You need to wait until you get back to your hotel room or I'm dropping you off. And he kicked them out of his cab. Mm. Not okay. the actions of someone who's being childish. No. Well, again, I didn't know that. And one of his favorite fate sayings is, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Right. Ugh. Well, that's... So, Beside the point, I I'm not racist or homophobic, but and we I don't think you are. Assume the best. I of course, you try to assume the best, but unfortunately, again, George is a totality of circumstances. Right. Look That's at everything. Fortunate. I I didn't know any of this, so it's sad, and and i might have mentioned it's again i've worked with people with mental health issues and substance abuse and i'm susceptible to trying to overhelp people and analyze them so maybe that's my interest one, in one last question yeah. from me yeah what what is your opinion of what's wrong with george i think he has Anger issues and denial, maybe a personality disorder. I'm not an expert, but now that I know at least he wasn't imagining the trolls, I don't think, it, or being them himself, that's out of the question. But I think he exaggerates, he over worries about things, and that was my opinion. I mean, it's true. My mom was a psychiatrist and I worked for her and I've studied these things and met a lot of people with issues, but I think it's more of a personality defect or, and anger. 
but that was before I knew this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. But um, well, for for me, I thank you for at least having the balls to speak to us, and at least hearing us out as well. Um, and I would hope you would appreciate that we've tried to be as respectful to you as possible on this call. Yeah, I have a I have a couple questions for you, Roger. Before we uh, head out here, um, did did you George ever talk to you about a woman named Sherry? Uh, he mentioned briefly. No, that was you guys mentioned. It. Okay, okay. Hey, um, no also, on on average, when you guys do a show, I assume George streams to his private Facebook group. Ken, how how many viewers on average do you get when you guys do that? Like one or two. Yes. Okay. Did anybody ever type or interact with your guys's live stream? Like type to you guys, say hi, or can you do something? This and that. There's maybe two or three people that really watch it live. Mm -hmm. There's a guy that was on the show named T. Hank Cook, who I yeah. met, just some harmless older guy, and a guy who George knows from somewhere. He lives somewhere else. Casey? Then, yeah. Yeah, some self-help guru. I bullshit yeah. peddler yeah yeah so he thinks that guy is his friend and confides in him but other than that maybe uh you know there's like 30 50 or 60 people on the page and i know that's about all that would watch so really the show is done to no one yeah so but, essentially but then when you put in a room with george doing nothing yeah, but then when he puts it on YouTube, then all these people watch it, and then they take it and put it on your whoever's channel that is. So yeah, I imagine he likes that, even though he claims he doesn't. One other thing: what and do you know about the book? I know everything about the book. <laughs> Don't tease us, Roger. Don't tease us. What do you know? He was editing it while he was staying here a few times, and he saved it to my computer accidentally. And oh, to Roger, me. you've ah. got to give us a copy. And Please. I can read the darn thing, because the first chapter, which he says he released or read, is from the beginning awful. It is the worst grammar, the worst spelling, the worst punctuation, and it mentions him coming out of his mother's womb and punching the doctor. Would you be willing to give us the copy? Oh, I mean, is there some way? I, I don't know. If you, uh, I, as a token, other as a token of good faith, like I said, uh, we already took the videos down off that channel of you. So, um, we're willing to keep our side. If you can, if you can provide us with a copy of the book, you can either send it to me um, or Marty. We can, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll keep, we can, we can keep it a secret on, on the how we got it. We won't say that you gave it to us. Um, if we ever, and then this part can be edited out of the call, uh, so he doesn't know. But yeah, we would like we would like a copy of that if if you have that available. I just don't think that's the right thing to do. I'll have to think about it, but I do like have. I said, we can, it's we can, you know, stupid that it's really dumb. I, I feel bad for him that he doesn't know how to use computers and he saved it to hit my Google Docs instead of his. So what, other than it being the worst spelling and grammar, is it just nonsense? It is, unfortunately. I barely read it. I handle reading any more than I did because it's just him. Has he got a publisher lined up? Somehow he says he does. He says that he is paying for it to be published by someone monthly and they're editing it and they might have just tricked him and conned him into this whole okay, thing. So that's page publishing who essentially will take the money from him and not publish the book because it won't make it past legal because essentially his book is full of slander and defamation. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like the name you mentioned. 
Yeah. Um, you know, we know all about page publishing, and the book won't make it past legal. Have you ever been inside of George's car, inside of the van? I have seen the inside. There's no way I would go into it to drive. It looks <laughs> awful. And it smells. He yeah. does smell because he can't get to a shower and he doesn't wash his clothes or his shoes. That was another problem. With I was on the video and I'm trying not to smell him while sitting next to him. <laughs> Sorry, Roger, it's too funny. <laughs> it's 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 funny because in one of the podcasts I did with Captain Corpulence, we actually mentioned that you probably don't take big whiffs next to George because he stinks really bad, and it's just funny that that's how it is. <laughs> and I hate, I mean, it's sad. It really is. Even when he showers because he doesn't wash something correctly, it smells. I told him that. I even witnessed that he showered, but his something was smells. But uh, anyway, what what has he told you about thirteen oh seven Stony Creek Drive? Uh, his old the house the bank took from him. Has he ever said anything about it? He said the bank took it, foreclosed on it. He said that his parents gave it to him when they died. So his dad gave him that house. George remortgaged it twice. It was uh, mortgage free when he had it. Oh, no. Didn't know so that. he he raised nearly $400,000 against the house and he spent every penny. Oh. So that's kind of why I don't have a lot of sympathy for him. Ah. Uh, Life-changing money that he spent on whores and going to Vegas. Oh, wow. I mean, how does he even get, I guess he just lies because some people I know are very normal people that know him and he, at least he claims they're his friend. And uh, uh, I think that, I think there's a lot of people who just avoid George, who he thinks are his friend. Right. And there's a lot of people who just go do you know what it's easier to smile and wave than it is to have him go crazy ah uh, maybe that's it um you know it's uh, he's a difficult person to get on with at the best of times yeah so there's a lot of people that just go do you know what just smile and wave walk on and he won't talk to us right ah uh. um, you know um, but like I say, Roger, to me, this has been fantastic, um, you know, that you've had the decency to talk to us. Well, you did blackmail me into it, but what choice? I didn't know who you all were or what else you do, and it kind of rattled me. Because I'm not this type of person that goes out and files police reports or threatens people. So, Has but George that, ever said to you why the police don't do anything? No, but it's kind of obvious that he doesn't have evidence and because he's rude to them. When he called the police from here, he was rude to the woman on the phone and at the desk, pushy. He was rude to the police officer. And I what think. What was he phoning the cops about when he was with you? The flyer. Oh, right. So he's reported that to the cops. He did. And they told him to make a protective order against any person he could name, but that he'd have to come in between eight and three and uh, to the Henrico court office and file it himself. And he didn't want to do that, but he was about to do it. Did it not strike you as strange that he didn't want to do it? Uh, it just struck me as, well, he kept, he even said to the police officer, woman on the phone, I could take this into my own hands. I want to go over there and kick Michael Saunders' ass. I know it's him because of his double-jointed thumb in some pictures. And they were just pleasant and said, well, you can file a protective order against him. And then George said, but there's a whole group of people. And, you know, he's him and Kristen 
have called the cops on Michael Saunders so many times, not once have the cops ever been to his house. I didn't know that, of course. He he has been on calls telling George, pick the phone up, call 911, we'll do it together and tell them what you're saying to me and tell them to come to my house. He doesn't do it because George knows he's lying. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Well, then... Kristen has phoned the cops telling them that Michael Saunders is a paedophile and that Michael Saunders is trying to steal her children. They didn't what? even phone to follow it up. Hmm. That doesn't make any sense. But... Because Kristen and George are in a crank file with the police. Because oh. they call the cops about everything. I didn't. Well, Kristen isn't associated with George anymore. No, she isn't. But they, she has right. called the cops on everyone, telling everyone they're a pedophile. Right. Even George thinks she's nuts. He said she. Yeah, so she's he crazy. Stopped, he, he stopped working with her, or if you call it working, dealing yeah. with her. Uh, they're both nuts. Yeah. But okay, that's good to know we wouldn't go through with that because I was thinking I was going to have to go to the police. Never go through with Roger. He'll never go through with it because he knows he can't prove anything. And he right. knows that then he also knows that a federal court ruled him a public figure. Right. And the federal court said, we can mock him and do whatever we like. Hmm. Okay. As long as he keeps uploading shows to the internet. He is a public figure. Ah. As long as he goes on public access TV, he is a public figure. Well, that's been cut off for a long time, but okay. The, but... the status of public figure doesn't change, though. Right. It's not. So okay. he's been deemed by a federal judge in a court in a federal court ruling that he is a public figure, and he will always be one. He thinks, George thinks that a public figure is defined by how much money they make. No, he's not a public figure. In theory, you're a public figure because you put yourself in the public eye. Mm -hmm. I guess I am too. I guess we I guess we kind of all are, though we, the trolls could be considered public figures in varying degrees since we don't show our faces. But um, if you're like Kevin Kravitz, uh, George's friend, you, George himself, have, have made in existence are known because they've put themselves on a public access show for anybody to come in and view and puts sure. himself on YouTube for anybody to watch. And you don't have to make a lot of money to be a public figure. You don't have to make any money off of your stuff to be a public figure. That's why Judge Gidney called him that. And by the way, uh, George, <laughs> George is convinced that we paid off a federal judge to make that ruling. And, you know, we'll, we'll leave that ambiguous, but... Uh, George will, regardless of what happened with the judge, George is always going to be anything that we do to George. Like the recorded phone calls, for example, George is going to say that those are a violation of his privacy. They are not a violation of his privacy because in Virginia, in order to record a legally record a call, it's a one person state or a one person consent state. So as long as one person on the call consents to the being recorded, you can record the call. And then you can all we are also legally allowed to upload it based off of that court ruling that George is a public figure and it's not afforded the same privacy rights as the private citizen. So if he I'm sure he's tried to peddle that with you or you might be curious about the legality of us being able to upload those calls. It is completely legal. I have fought or Mark has fought YouTube on them. Uh, multiple times, Marty has as well, and um, and they we win every time. Otherwise, all our channels would be closed down. Yeah, I, that Mark's this, channel, this, the Mark's what, channel would have been that, shut down if if we weren't allowed to upload those. But why are you all not being on video except for uh, Henry Mitchell, who's been on it? Just... Oh, uh, on my channel, I have plenty of. Uh, there's videos of me back when I was doing a public access show back in the 90s. I, George has actually done a review video of that. Of that, My my face is openly available. I'm in movies, for God's sakes. Like, I'm in um, Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in fucking movies, man. Like, my face is out there. Gross. You just gotta, you just gotta look for it. I just didn't, okay. He said yeah. you, okay. What did he no say about me? He said, I think he was talking about you 
saying that you had a bit part as an extra non-speaking part in a movie. George George says that because he's extremely jealous that I have connections in Hollywood and I am everything that George wishes he could be when it comes to um, Hollywood fame. That's why he does it. It's pure jealousy. No other reason. If I can tell you right now, if the if the tables were turned and I was only on a failed public access channel or station in Richmond for 26 years and hadn't gone anywhere and George was in movies and stuff with Bruce Willis and worked on behind the scenes and unsolved mysteries and everything, George would be saying, you're just jealous of me because I'm in movies. He, he, he'd say it would be – he's a complete hypocrite. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I – yeah. All right. I mean, I don't have any other questions, and I guess I appreciate it, your willingness to take my videos down. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, Seriously consider our offer about the book. Yeah. What, what, can, we do, what can we do to um, get you to send us that book copy, besides not tell George that you're where we got it from? Well, I'm not a greedy person. Money would be nice, but I don't want that. What's the What's the figure? This is in... I don't know. That's not really... I mean, the point of it would just to be to mock him, but he does a good job of himself. It's a terrible book. It's... I, you can tell from the first sentence how bad the book is. It's Come just, on, Roger. You can, man, this is like a bad lap dance, Roger. Yeah. You can't tease us with that. You're grinding on us now with this book, and then you can't That's, not reveal everything. I mean, what would you do with it? We would read it. We would do a dramatic reading of the whole book. It's... Let me look at it here. Anything else you want to... Um ask us or talk about before we I, I think we're pretty much good now just checking one more time nope no I mean again I just feel bad that this is going on and uh, glad you're agreeing to let me be out of it because I didn't want to be involved in it anyway. Yep, as long as you don't come back, we will not come back. So if there's a chance I was on his show, like Kevin's been on it a few times, but apparently, did you Kevin talk alone. to you at all? No. Have you not noticed we leave Kevin alone? Well, why do you leave him alone? Because he stopped being on George's show? Or? Yep. Because, partly because he stopped being on the show, but also George... Kevin knows what George is, and Kevin openly calls George out on his bullshit. Ah, I see. You know, that's why Kevin has chosen to disassociate himself with George, because he knows it's just not worth it anymore. Right, but as early, as recently as, what was it, the Super Bowl, Kevin came on the show. Kevin will do things to placate George... Right. Every once in a while to stop him phoning him. Ah, uh, yeah. So he'll say, oh, I'll come on the show, and then he'll tell George he's busy for another six months. I see. Yeah, well, I will not be on the show at all. Easier to smile and wave than it is to have a problem with him. Yeah. Well, uh, I can assure you that if he catches wind that this happened, you will not be on another show. Just, you won't have a choice, so. I don't yeah. want to be. Really don't. It was a pain in the butt and bad for my image. I was even thinking of sending you all my link to my actual shows and music and stuff that's actually a lot better, but then I was thinking I'd get trolled for that. But, you know, we have a scripted show that I did with someone else where we're characters and we did skits. And uh, it's bad to be associated with such a bad show, you know. So there's really no downside to me not being on it. That is oh how bad his acting and his show are. Anyway. Okay. I don't have so, anything else. Marty, do you have anything else? 
No, no, no. I've got nothing else. It's been a okay. pleasure, Roger. And as I said, thank you for being respectful to us. Yes. Sure. If there's any legal information now that I know what really is going on that you need, other than what I've said, I'd be glad to talk to you all about it, as wacky as that sounds. Okay. I just didn't know all that at but all. We'll get in touch if there's anything else we need, Roger. Okay. Okay. All right. Take care, man. Thanks, Roger. Cheers. Okay. Take care. Bye. Okay. Bye.